Hey there, Nick Jatakis here. In this video, we're going to combine using grep instead to do a recursive find and replace on the command line. This could be useful if you have a pattern of files that you want to search into and then do a string replacement within those files. Now, of course, there's many different ways to solve this problem. You can always pop open a code editor and do your finding and replacing there. But if you're writing a script, then it is pretty useful to be able to do this on the command line. So throughout this video, we're going to play around with a couple of different tools. For example, you know, when it comes to grepping through a code base or anything, I actually kind of prefer to use rip grep sometimes if I'm just running ad hoc commands, just because I find there is a little bit less syntax to type to get the results that I want. So we're going to actually go over both solutions using grep and rip grep. We're going to be using xargs and piping that stuff into sed to do the actual find and replace. But we also will experiment with using Perl instead of sed just because it's a little bit more compatible across OpenBSD and Linux. This way we have a solution that works if you're using something like Mac OS as well as any Linux distro. So with that said, you know, let's quickly go over the use case here. So I have a blog, nickgenetakis.com, and I have, I don't know, 500 something posts over the last 10 years there. And yeah, there's a lot of links to twitter.com. And as you know, of course, you know, their site changed to x.com. And, you know, it's kind of good to be good citizens of the web. You know, maybe it's about time that I go through all the uh, blog posts that I have and replace twitter.com with x.com. You know, this way the redirect doesn't need to happen on Twitter's side there. So, you know, we can use something like rip grep here to very quickly search over this entire blog post uh, or blog post directory here. You know, nothing to really follow along here unless you want to do this on some directory that you have here. But if I do a search here for twitter.com, you know, using rip grep here, by the way, we'll go over the grep solution in a second here. Uh, this is going to, you know, do a search here and return all the results that we have here. And if we take a look here, you know, there's some Java script that's, you know, concatenated or minified and stuff. But, you know, here's basically all the different blog posts that I have where we can see, you know, twitter.com is referenced here and here and here and all sorts of different other places that we have um, throughout this code base, right? There's dozens of them, hundreds of them potentially. And yeah, I don't want to go in there by hand and manually replace all of those to be x.com. You know, that would be kind of annoying there. So I figured, you know what, maybe I'll just throw it up into a video here and do the finding and replacings and see how things go. You know, we, we can replicate this exact behavior with rip grep using just regular grep as well, right? For example, we can say, let's grep, uh, you know, HTTPS, twitter.com. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to do uh, recursive mode because it's got to go through multiple directories here. At least that's what I want in this case. But then, you know, one convenience of rip grep is I actually have this one dot ignore file. So if you actually take a look at that real quick here, let's go ignore. I have done videos about this one in the past because this is actually not a Git repo, but rip rep is going to, you know, look at this ignore file and it's automatically going to exclude files and directories that exist in this file. So there's, you know, all sorts of different directories and files that are not being searched in. And that's actually what we want. But in this case here, you know, with, with grep, that's not the case. We're going to have to actually have to exclude some of those directories here. So actually, let me split this so it's a little bit easier on myself to know which directories I need to exclude. But yeah, in this case, it's going to be uh, grep, yep, twitter.com here, and then we're going to do recursive. And then what are we going to do? We are going to exclude a directory here, which is going to be the public directory. That's the first line on the list down here. And then we're also going to exclude the uh, published directory as well. That's also another one I see down there. And then we're also going to exclude exclude dir equals drafts and normally or content drafts, I should say, uh, this is normally wouldn't be excluded normally wouldn't be in the ignore file. But for the sake of the video, I put this in here just because I have, you know, hundreds of different blog posts that have drafts. Some of them have Twitter links there and I just don't want to echo those out and then have to like maybe blur them later doing some editing or whatever. So this is the same grep command here. And of course we'll do that on the current directory. Uh, so let's see this work in action. Yep. There we go. Uh, there's all the, the results there. So now, you know, just to show both commands again, side by side, now you can maybe see why sometimes it's a little bit nicer if you're just running some ad hoc commands in the command line where rip grep is a little bit more convenient. You know, it's going to, you know, recurse automatically here. It's going to exclude some directories that you might have in this file here. And uh, yeah, just a little bit less typing. And there's also another neat feature that rip grep has as well. For example, you know, when it comes to, you know, actually doing the action, I kind of want to see a preview of that before I do it. So I think there's a, it's replaced. I think as a flag here. So you can actually say replace this with what we want, right? Like x.com, you know, in, in this case here, we can see that, uh, you know, now we get a little preview of what's going to be replaced, how it's going to replace. We can kind of make sure that things look the way they need to look because you never know, you know, maybe you have some typos in your blog post or maybe some edge cases where, you know, you're getting some false positives or an accidental redirect, or maybe, you know, you're just doing this as a one-off command here. And you notice that like, 
you know, let's say there's a hundred links, like maybe 98 of them are fine, but there's two of them that you need to go back and kind of adjust. So, you know, now you can at least kind of take a look at that real quick before that did anything on disk, because, you know, this flag that we just added here, this is not going to replace anything on disk. This is just printing things to output. So in fact, you know, RipGrep is coded up in such a way that, you know, it is never going to write to disk. Basically, that's what the author said in a couple of different uh, GitHub issues when folks asked for, you know, can RipGrep ever do some finding and replacing in a file? So now that we have uh, the situation here where we do have, you know, the matches that we want. Um, and now we actually do want to do some finding and replacing here. How would we get that to work? So, you know, you could always use something like said, right? Like for example, and by the way, this wouldn't work on Mac OS with this flag as it is right now, but you can basically what said, just be like, you know, let's, you know, search for something old, replace it with something new. And then like, I don't know, like whatever, right? Like put it on a specific file. And if there were a file named hello.md in this root directory, which is not, you know, it would globally replace old with new here and uh, doing an in-place edit here. I think on Mac OS, you'd have to do that for it to work. Uh, otherwise you'll get some error there. The OpenBSD version of said's a little bit different, but in any case, this would, you know, allow us to do a find and replace in one file. But what if you have a, uh, you know, a whole nested recursed directory structure that you want to go through, you could, I guess, maybe use file globbing like this. If your shell supports it, maybe that would work. Um, but what if you have a little bit more advanced filtering, like maybe, you know, you have a list of files that you want to get, but it's not so much as pattern matching on this. Maybe it's like the result of a regular expression. So this is where using something like grep, you know, piping into said is quite useful. And you may have seen this being done with find as well. Like for example, you know, if you were to do find in something like, uh, I guess what the content blog directory here, you know, that's going to produce a whole bunch of different files here, right? These are all the blog posts that I have over time. And what you could do here is, you know, you can add to this command here and essentially, you know, pipe in all the files from find directly into said using xargs, you know, xargs is going to basically have all of those different file names be passed in as arguments to said. And then individually, you know, those files are going to have be replaced one by one by one by one by one until they're all done and you're good to go. But if find is really just producing a list of files, then we can do the same thing with grep and rip grep. We can produce a list of files, except now they can be filtered by whatever you want and then pipe those into, you know, xargs and said as well. So uh, with rip grep, you can actually do, I think it is, actually I have a little note here because I always forget this flag. I don't use it a whole lot. Files with matches. So files with matches. So here, this is only going to list the file names here, which is, you know, kind of what we want, right? Very similar to that find output that we just saw here. You can see there's all sorts of different references here in a content directory, layouts directory, you know, static uh, directory here as well. And now, you know, now we could take this result, pipe it into XRX, pipe it into said, do the find and replace, and we're good to go. But, you know, let's just say that you're not using rip grep, right? Maybe you're using regular grep because you don't have rip grep installed. That's fine. Uh, we can do this with grep as well. So here's our whole command that we had before. Uh, we just need to add another flag here. Also, what is this flag? From my notes, it is files with matches. Okay, so that's really the only difference here. You know, um, these flags exist in the same way. Uh, they actually are the same flag too, which is nice. So it's convenient that both tools end up having the same flags. Uh, but yeah, okay, so there's basically the same output there. And now we can do the same thing with either tool. So going back to here, you know, just a little bit shorter, easier to maybe see on video. Uh, now we need to kind of just pipe that into XARGs and then we can use said just like we saw before. And in this case, we'll do an in-place edit. Again, if you're using Mac OS, you can do this. And then what do we want to do? Well, we want to do a find and replace basically old to the new uh, globally here. And, you know, there's nothing like literally old to new that we're going to be replacing, but it is going to be Twitter.com being replaced with X.com. So what we could do here is just put in HTTPS and then Twitter.com here. And the new one is going to be HTTPS and then X.com. And, you know, now we have to deal with some escaping. So in this case, we have a scenario where we're using forward slashes as delimiters for a set here, but we have forward slashes here for the URL. So we could escape all these backslashes if we want, but in my opinion, it's a little bit cleaner here just to change the delimiter here for set. So now we can just say, you know what, let's just use, uh, you know, the pipe symbol here as a delimiter. Really, it could be any symbol that's not, you know, something that you want to escape. For example, you know, we could have used maybe the at symbol or something, assuming that's a valid character. You know, I don't want to give you bad advice here, but the pipe character is going to work here. So what are we doing before we run this one? Because this will actually do finding and replacing. Well, we're going to do a search for twitter.com here in all the files. It's going to return a list of files here that match this. Again, you know, this is really just narrowing down the list that find would have provided. Again, in this example, using find would have been fine because it's really not a whole lot of advanced like filtering going on here. But then what are we doing? Well, for each of those files that are returned from RipGrep, then we are going to do an in-place edit with said, 
replacing twitter.com with x.com. So let's run that and see how that works here. All right, no output is kind of what we expected here. Now, if we do a rep grep now on twitter.com, you know, let's just say without the files that matches so we can see the results here, we're actually not getting anything back. And that's good. That means that the files were uh, replaced on disk here. So if we go and do a search now with rip grep for x.com, just like we did before, uh, except now it's x.com instead of Twitter, you know, we can see all of the different results that we have here. Um, in fact, actually what you could do is uh, if you wanted to maybe, maybe fact check this a little bit better on your end before you do the finding replaces, you can always do a word count here and see like, okay, there's 70 of them. Okay. So maybe we can go back to how that was before with twitter.com. Uh, well, I guess, you know, should I really re run everything? Does it really matter? I guess not, but let's do it anyways, just for the heck of it. So, you know, this is, you know, now we're going to be searching for x.com because all the files were replaced there. Then we're going to do the same exact find and replacing, but in reverse, x.com is going to be replaced with twitter.com, right? And now if we do the same thing here with the word count um, for twitter.com, then this one should be uh, also showing 70, right? But ideally you'd be doing these word counts before you do the finding and replacing. All right, so that's the rip grep scenario here. The the grep one, fortunately, is actually exactly the same as uh, the rip grep one, right? Because if we go back to what we had a second ago, you know, this longer command here, uh, this part is not going to change after the pipe because it doesn't matter if find or rip grep or grep is passing this into, you know, xargs and said, it's all going to operate the same way here. So I'm just going to run this again just to make sure everything is back to x.com there. Well, actually, no, you know what? Instead of doing that again, because I don't have to revert it and go back and blah, 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 blah. Let's use Perl instead of said. So we could do this. Let's go with uh, the twitter.com one. And instead of using said, with dash i there. We're going to use Perl and this one is going to be i dash pe here. So this is gonna do the same thing, you know, in place, um, find and replace, but this one is gonna be compatible with OpenBSD, aka, you know, you know, if you're running Mac OS, this will work. It will work on Linux as well. So, you know, if I were to be writing, you know, sort of a portable shell script, then I would probably reach for this Perl solution. And I say probably, I'd be, uh, I will say I will reach for this one. I've written plenty of little scripts for work and contract work and my own stuff where, you know, I do use this here. So let's give this a roll here and see how it goes. So that command works successfully there. You see this one didn't fail. And now if we do a rip rep for twitter.com, we shouldn't find anything. And if you do it again for x.com, then it should find many things. So yeah, there we go. And then, you know, we can even do the our word count L like before. And uh, there we go. There's our 70 results. So that's really going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.